Welcome to Azure Infinite Podcast, episode 12. This is your host, Reika Fujishima, also known as Hikari Kazushime. Uh, today, we have somebody with us who has not been with us on the podcast before. Glitch Symphony here from the community, one of our scout captains in Azure Infinite is here with us tonight. Hello. <laughs> Glad to have you with us, Glitch. We're gonna, there is uh, a glitch in the system. <laughs> we got a glitch in the system. Yep, yep. Whether she's excited or not, we're excited. She's here. <laughs> wow. Well, tonight we're going to uh, go over uh, a few things here. We have a little bit of a shorter episode for you guys, um, but we thank you for listening to our podcast. And, uh, you know, here we are. Uh, brand new year. Brand new year. 2023, starting fresh up the year. We've got a new patch coming to Final Fantasy XIV uh, in just a few days here on uh, Tuesday, January 10th, launching patch mm. 6.3 for Final Fantasy XIV Online. Uh, there's a bunch of really awesome stuff that's coming with that patch. It's a pretty big patch, and we're going to delve into that uh, pretty pretty soon here. Uh, first, we're going to talk about some things uh, on the road ahead for Azure Infinitum, uh, what to look forward to. We're going to get deep into that uh, patch content in, in that discussion, uh, followed by uh, a little bit about uh, what we're doing with Destiny 2 right now and some things to look forward to. Here we are, you know, we're, we're beginning a new year, coming off of the last few months of the uh, what's still the recent patch of Final Fantasy XIV, um, and our um, our eight man raids are ending. We're getting excited for the twenty four man um, that's returning. The second part of that, those are the uh, the real real big raids in Final Fantasy XIV Online, uh, and uh, there's just a lot to look forward to. So um, over on our website, you can check uh, uh, https colon slash slash www.azurefinitum.com <laughs> at any time uh, to see some of our news and uh, updated info about what's going on. Uh, the latest post you're going to see is the New Year's greetings on the road ahead. <clears throat> and uh, there's a little statement on there. Uh, you know, uh, those who are listening, you, you, know, you can check it out anytime. Uh, it's just a little bit of a statement about 2022 and um, what we're looking at for 2023 so far from, from this point here at the start of the year. So uh, coming off of last year, we are looking at an entire year of... Uh, new and raids, new content. Doing 14. Things. Yay. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> actually doing things. Uh, at least two Final Fantasy fourteen patches this year. Um, I can't imagine that it would be more than three, but uh, it's definitely not going to be more than three. Uh, we've yeah. got, we got to, we get, we might we have three. Most, if we're yeah. lucky, we're going to have three by the yeah. end of the year. Um, I hope they don't make us only have two when we're getting the first one in January, but. Um, you know, looking at two to three, as far as we know, uh, patches this year, that's going to, that's going to finish off the, uh, pandemonium eight man raids later this year. Um, you know, and then we're about to continue that second part of the 24 man. Yeah. Um, it's going to be, uh, it's going to be something. So, um, aside oh, from that, milkers. yeah, <laughs> wait, wait, what'd you say? <laughs> Not because of milk. Oh my milkers. god! Mommy <laughs> milkers. Yeah. Uh, yes, the uh, very well endowed uh, goddess that will be appearing in the uh, twenty four man raid on Tuesday. <laughs> uh, literally, literally. Of them, of, I think. Like, we, we say dolls balls. Mm -hmm. out dolls. dolls. Yeah. Balls. Oh my god. Virginia, they say. Like, mommy's milkers. Like, <laughs> hey, you know what? That's listen, actually uh, that's a good topic. Actually, they, uh, say, they say like goddesses' tits or something like that. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Not Wait, do they really have some? Do they really have a saying like that? Yeah. Hold on, let me see. Yeah. Okay. Not the. <laughs> And she's googling it. <laughs> I'm gonna see if it actually somebody actually says. I don't know if you no, can Google says... that. You might get something. <laughs> <Yes>. uh... <laughs> 
You're gonna, you're gonna pull up some interesting stuff. You're gonna get like this is uh, why we're letting glitch do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Like I have like no qualms about like you're gonna you're gonna pull up like hit hentai haven or something doing that. Oh my god, I would. Glitch is gonna and then is gonna find out about it two weeks later. And so while you're while you're looking that up, glitch, um, I think it's great for our listeners to actually hear the story behind Thal's balls. So uh, if you didn't know and you're listening, um, <clears throat> a long time ago, when, in the early days of development of uh, A Realm Reborn for Final Fantasy XIV, uh, there was a time where they were testing the floating text in the game. And, uh, you know, when you walk around and you, you see NPCs, uh, a little speech bubble comes above their head. Um, the, those little, you know, bits of dialogue that float. Uh, and they wanted to just put something in there and and they did it to where like all the npcs in the entire game had it had this one phrase and it was thal's balls and thal is you know part of nald thal the the, the two-part deity uh you know worshipped in the thanland region in uh oh, you know totally mostly the thanland region and uh yep <laughs> yeah amazing song and uh and 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 so so thal's balls is actually in the lore it's actually like a curse you know, it's a curse word or a curse phrase or whatever. And, you know, they say, oh, darn it, false balls, you know. And so um, Koji Fox, uh, the uh, lore and writer guy, uh, you know, I forgot his official title, like world lore designer or something uh, and writer. Um, he he kind of put that in there as a joke to while they were testing it. And, you know, he, he told the story at a fan fest, I think in, I think it was 2014 fan fest. So he told the story last time I seen him talk about it, but it was really hilarious because you basically, you're, you know, they're testing the game, but while you're running around, you're just seeing all the people in the game, just saying thals balls, thals balls, thals balls. And I think it's funny that, you know, now that we actually finally get to, uh, uh, fight Thal or Nald Thal and in the uh, uh, Aglia raid, which is the first 24 man. Uh, we're getting the second part on Tuesday, uh, but the first 24 man in Aglia, we actually got to see and fight Nald Thal, and he indeed mm -hmm. attacks with balls <laughs> at a certain point of the raid. So it's uh, it's pretty comical. I have a feeling that's a that's a throwback to that reference, and you'll see NPCs still say it. Like there's some NPCs that'll still say Thal's balls. Glitch, did you find anything on those milkers? <laughs> Uh, no, uh, I, no, but I found something else quite impressive. I'm sure you did. Specifically, no, because, um, specifically no because teats. Yeah. Is I, it I, I, appropriate for the podcast? It, it, it's no because no teats. I found something on the mommy milkers, but I didn't find a whole bunch of unfortunate things. Just... Somebody photoshopped a face on the tree that you see in the trailer. Oh. And started Worm says, Nothing oh, better not be a tree. I'm just imagining edit. a very well endowed tree. Fantastic. I, I saw an edit of that one screenshot <clears throat> of the lone tree on like the amber waves of grain. Just the <laughs> whole Final Fantasy 14 location text Ohio. That's funny. Oh, the Ohio one, yeah, yeah. Oh, you know, you know uh, what? Uh, yeah. I think uh, I, I think Nafika is not a tree because I believe I saw her actually wielding a scythe. In yeah, uh, she's like yeah, she has a scythe. Yeah, what is with like that? I guess. Well, we're gonna find out. So well, I mean, she, uh, she's like uh, the goddess of the harvester sun. Right. And then like oh uh, yeah, the harvest. Yeah. The gatherers yeah. have scythes. That's gotcha. Oh yeah, it's not Reaper. Too. Yeah, okay, okay. So well, what... we got dolls, balls, and Nofika's teats. <laughs> and we just need a third one. What? What's the I... third swear? I don't remember the third swear. I don't remember. <laughs> every everybody, everybody in Limsa just kind of curses Leviathan. Like, yeah. <laughs> so I was looking at the trailer again, um, and they have like they show like different gods in the background while like mm -hmm, mm -hmm. what i believe is mephina speaking i'm not sure yet yeah. who this is i think it is because everybody's like memeing about her being hatsune miku <laughs> <laughs> but there's like two oh, yeah, in the background there, there's like two in the background aside I, from that i think one of them is altic i'm i think uh Nothic? Althic, yeah. I, I'm Althic, not sure. yeah, I think yeah. because like the timey I mean, Yeah, he's the time guy, yeah. That's the one that I, I picked. <laughs> I think that the one in the back it, I can't mm. tell if that's a if that's a like a navigation wheel or if mm. that's mm. a spinning wheel. Uh, if it's a spinning it, wheel, that would make sense because uh one of them has that I think symbol. It's the spinning wheel. Is that Minfina, I think? It could be either Nimia the spinner or, or Lim Wayne the navigator. 
Oh yeah, I don't know. It's not Limlane. It's not Lim. Limlane's like a weird wave symbol or something. Yeah, but she. Um, but like, if she had like a navigation mm -hmm. wheel, in. Okay. Oh, maybe navigator. Well, I, guess, I, don't... I just want mommy alone to actually. Exist. Mama alone. Oh, we are we are getting we are getting to fight alone. Yeah, mommy alone. <laughs> yeah, we are getting to fight alone. Uh, so <laughs> journey into Euphrosine. That's actually the first on our list of updates on the New Year's post on AzureFandom dot com. Uh, kicking off yeah. January tenth, none other than patch six point three coming with it is Azure twenty four man Tuesdays, Mist of the Realm officially returning, which is going to group each Tuesday at eight forty five. Uh, p.m. Eastern, 7.45 p.m. Central, and 5.45 p.m. Pacific via Party Finder. And we want everybody to know that we're, we're grouping via Party Finder. It's a private Party Finder with the password. So you're going to have to tab over to the, the uh, private tab. You're going to want to enter the password. Password is always going to be announced throughout grouping time in the FC chat. So just keep an eye on FC chat. Uh, anyone is welcome to join this as long as you're level 90. Uh, you're going to have to make sure you're the right eye level. If you need a little help with your eye level, uh, just let us know. A lot of time we can spot you some gear or something, get you going. We just want to make sure everybody that can uh, make it and has has the, at least the first uh, Miss of the Realm raid mm -hmm. unlocked. That's Aglia. Uh, you're going to make sure you have the, at least the first one because we're going to run both. We're going to run both back to back. We're going to be doing this each week all the way through to patch 6.4. So uh, and, definitely look forward to that and come yeah. along. You're going to get a uh, upgrade piece at the end. It's going to help you get some nice, uh, sweet, what, 630 gear, I believe. And uh, it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be a fun time. The big twenty four man raids is always a uh, always a blast. Also, y'all, uh, for those who are doing like Aglaia, those that are doing Aglaia for the first time, like for the love of God, turn up your music on the last boss. It is <laughs> it it slaps yeah. Yeah. harder than I love Africa all the music State. from it. It's like it's a really nice soundtrack for this raid. I cannot wait to hear how Silicon Out does himself this time. Who do you think? Uh, who do you guys right. think is going to be the last uh, boss of the of the next raid? I think, I think the God of Gun Africa have the, Africa? have the city state bosses be the capstone. Okay, that wouldn't okay. surprise me either, honestly. I think that it's going to be Mephina. I don't know why. I just got this feeling that she's feeling not going to be... like end with Halone and start with Nafika and fight Altic and Minfina in the middle. Like, I mean, like Halone should be like just the end of all of it because yeah. bitch is the fury. <laughs> he is furious. Like, straight up. You know, I have a feeling that uh, not to oh, okay, not to get too yeah. far into spoilers, but I have a feeling that uh, that uh, the character traveling along with you, that guy, I have a feeling that he's one of them, and I think oh. that uh, the one that he is is one oh, that's yeah. definitely not oh, been revealed yeah. yet, and he, we're yeah, going to fight him at the yeah. end probably. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, like, just, really? you're a, you're probably give right. a little hint. Yeah, the wanderer because he mentions mm. being a wanderer. Mm. So we joke on my Twitch chat about this the, the person that joins along with you. Yeah. And we're like, shut up, name. Did you see Graha in the uh, trailer? Or in yeah, the so first scene stuff where he's just kind of like using this weird, like, he's, he's got like so something cute. strapped to his back and he's got like some goggles and he's like doing something in that room. He's a little fluffy like adventure. But uh, we like got to... Dylan or something like that. I don't know. <clears throat> we got to move on like... though because we got, uh, we got a whole bunch of updates to get through. <laughs> it's just huge. So, uh, I, uh, uh, besides, uh, after you foresee, so we've got, uh, <laughs> Ball balls. we've got, uh, rank preserve. <laughs> okay. Let me redo that. We got rank prerequisites. We the third one. What's the third one? I know there's a third one. There's gotta be. Hold um, on. What? <laughs> uh, just like capital state God swears. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> So uh, moving, moving on, uh, we yeah, got. Uh, yeah, we, we, we could do this. We could do this later. Which, yeah, we, yeah. We, we, we've got. We've got to move forward, guys. <laughs> yeah. So Sorry. uh we're gonna be here like two hours if we. <laughs> so okay. Right. So so we got rank prerequisites revisions and other uh, related updates. Uh, what we're what we're gonna be looking at is we're gonna take a look at uh, some of our support roles and some other things uh, to do with our prerequisites for the ranks. So uh, if you are in our community and you're really interested in ranking up or maybe uh, you know taking a kind of a casual support role. Um, there's a lot of options coming for that. Uh, they, they currently exist, but they're going to be uh, updated here soon. So definitely check our ranks page at any time. Uh, check out those rank prerequisites. They're going to be updated. We want to, we want to, we want everybody that uh, 
that wants to help uh, to be able to have that chance to to get involved. So uh, definitely take a look at that. Some of the some of those things uh, changes are going to include um, just kind of bringing down the cap on like how far you know we expect someone to be in you know in fourteen to have an idea of the content uh, because now we're we're so far into the expansions. Um, you know people can easily be in the second you know first and second expansion and have a great idea of the game, still be able to help people, uh, and still yeah. t you know take like one of our scout roles for example. Um, we are developing a Azure Handbook and Welcome Packet. Uh, that's going to be uh, coming out in the near future. Uh, it's going to be distributed to all uh, new recruits, but it can also be accessed by anybody currently in the community as well. Um, and we're going to be um, beefing up our recruitment. <laughs> we're going to be yes, looking I was gonna at... Say, we uh, definitely want yeah. a lot more scouts. <laughs> yes. Like, yes. at the bare minimum, scouts. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Yeah, we're going to be beefing up our if, recruitment. If I can work my way through the ranks, <clears throat> anybody can. So, come on, guys. <laughs> if you are doubting... Be do not doubt yourself. Be fun. Do it. Azure is going to be entering all, all a recruitment a campaign is, period. Is just hanging out, talking to your friends, hanging out with your friends, doing stuff with your friends. That's it. And don't forget Thal's balls. Thal's balls. Mm -hmm. So Azure is going to be Thal. entering a recruitment campaign period for uh, plans to boost activity <laughs> ratios and uh, target different time zones and crowds for growth and development. So it's important with Azure's highly active model that we always continue to you know, keep our doors open, uh, but actively continue to seek future comrades while looking to grow our communities, various active time uh, time periods. So uh, extra effort is going to go into recruiting more players in our community who are active during North American times of late night and early morning hours as well. Those are definitely times that we know that our, our late night and early morning folks would love to have more people around uh, to do things with, as well as European evening hours and midday evening North American hours. Uh, the campaign period is not exactly a contest. We're not doing a recruitment contest, just to be clear. <laughs> but it is going to be an ongoing plan of action uh, to build you know, our, our future generations of members uh, increase activity around the clock, provide yeah, uh, current just, members. Yeah, we just want people on whenever uh -huh. anybody wants to do something. Yeah, providing yeah. current members with more active personalities yeah. and uh, just people to do things with as well. So like, hey, my all <clears> will be kind of an ongoing, you know, extra effort in our like... recruitment until we see our in-game roster get, you know, a lot, a lot closer to that cap. Uh, so we're going to, you know, we, we want you to please look forward to rising activity and higher attendances as we go. Please. Um, also, we haven't really talked about this in depth yet. We're, we have some council meetings, uh, you know, in the, uh, well, we have one specific council meeting in the f uh, near future, um, but we're going, we, there's something that has been coming up quite a bit that we want to bring back. And um, I wanted to bring this up. I know, uh, <laughs> um, uh, oh, I'm uh, excited, I yeah. think. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, sorry, I was just <laughs> checking something. I'm gonna edit that. Um, so something that we wanted to bring back is Blue Mage content to Azure. And like yeah. I said, we haven't exactly yeah. talked in depth about exactly how we're going to do it, but we want to kind of have a, a, a we want to kind of reassess um, what we can do with Blue Mage and how we can you know make it the best event possible. The other day I was on early in the morning and there was quite a bit of people that responded when we started talking about Blue Mage and bringing it back as an event. So um, it was kind of nice to see like a, a big reaction to that in the FC chat. Um, so you know if you're mm -hmm. listening, um, you know, <clears throat> go ahead and unlock Blue Mage if you haven't already. Mm -hmm. If your blue mage is uh, needing some levels or spells, uh, you know, um, definitely work on it. But but hang tight because we're we're looking at uh, putting together you know uh, something new for blue mage content in fourteen. In yeah, I have an we idea. Not have to do uh, leveling groups. Yeah. Uh, so I Rekha, not I, have to do leveling groups. Me and Nora have asked. So hit us up if you need le help leveling. Yeah, oh yeah. Well, I was going to say uh, real quick that uh, if you if you're if you're if you're already leveled with Blue Mage, that doesn't mean that there's nothing in the event for you. Like like it's yeah. going to be it's going to be yeah. We do that to, sometimes. Yeah, there's going to be different types of uh, yeah, kind kind of like what we did before. Um, but we'll see. You know, we haven't fully talked about we it yet. Will, what what, what did you what see. did you have a uh, glitch? So, so my <laughs> idea was that mm -hmm. we get a bunch of bards to play the eight. The 1812 Overture, mm -hmm. and have the Blue Mages as cannons. <laughs> the cannons? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. I actually, no, just actually okay. wanted to do That's this beautiful. for one of the uh, Azure anniversaries. <laughs> I forget whether it was this year or last year, but we just couldn't that arrange be... enough bards or Blue Mages. fantastic. <laughs> yeah, because it would be like, da 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 explosion, explosion. Yeah. Oh, Literally, just have Blue Mage self-destructing. Yeah. <laughs> it's so good. 
And you know, the uh no pun intended, but, but the sky is the limit. So um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> or as we found out in Endwalker, it's actually not. There's uh, many worlds out there. Anyway, stupid. Now shit. it's like space. <laughs> the Zeno shows up. It's uh, like, I'm you know. here too, homie. <laughs> it's Zeno's. Please. Yeah, he, he might show up again. You never know. Oh, so, gosh. Yeah. This is probably tired of me hearing it, saying this, but speaking of Xenos and Blue Mage, <laughs> when they <laughs> updated for Endwalker, it was yeah. concentrativity, you cowards. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, so, I just uh, drink while you were saying that. I was like, oh. <laughs> oh. So I want to do. Uh, what do you mean? Uh, game say. out of how I run Wonder, Wondrous Tales now. <laughs> oh, if Wondrous Tales was a drinking game, no one would. So, that. I'm super excited about uh, what's coming up in the new patch. It looks like there's going to be like some kind of. It looks like servantware almost, like. When it says like new recipes, I'm gonna add for crafting. I'm that I'm thinking that that may be the new cracker set, and I'm like, "Do you want a crop it, my lord?" <laughs> I see it, <laughs> and I'm like, "I want to wear this." Like, I'm ex- I'm planning to actually stream on launch of patch, like from like just I'm that excited to where I want to see everything, and also because that way Nora does not get spoiled, because I will do that content in. And like, talk about it before she is up. That way, she doesn't have to be spoiled by it. Like I had. I only have two year. conditions: don't wake me up with spoilers, and clear you for Zion before I get up. That's what. Yeah. I, <laughs> um, I'm I'm super excited about crafting and gathering. I'm getting like I'm trying to like prepare ahead of time mm-hmm. for like mm-hmm. what materials I'm going to need, what I don't need. It's it's you know the general pre patch. Okay, what will make the mo- me the most skill the fastest, mm. and when can I sell it? And tipping my hand a little bit here, perhaps, but I'm getting ready for it by really focusing on Island Sanctuary. All oh, y'all okay. crafter and gatherers are gonna need new materia, aren't you? <laughs> just saying. <laughs> oh, we're definitely gonna de- delve into uh, talking more about the new patch here in just a moment. But since you mentioned uh, <laughs> Disciple of Hand and Land, I did want to mention that uh, you know, that's also listed in one of our uh, uh, updates for the Road Ahead here in, the, in, our, in our New Year's post. Um, we want to look at uh, kind of making more of an ongoing effort to further build, encourage, and enhance presence and skill of our FF14 Free Companies Crafting Gathering Community. Uh, Disciple of Hand and Land players, um, beginning with uh, sort of the light promotion of our Azure Industry League show and the channel we have in Discord. Once we just want people to be aware that there is a, a you know a really great resource there to be able to talk and chat with other crafters and gatherers. But that's only the beginning. Uh, within Azure, we do actually have a lot of skilled players of uh, Disciple and Hand and Land. That's crafting and gathering jobs, uh, as well as battle jobs. Um, but we have far smaller. Um, activity i guess i would say in the uh hand and land community than than we have had in the past so there is a lot of joy in being self-sufficient i just want to let our listeners know uh maybe you haven't thought about it in a while or maybe you haven't got really deep into it uh but but being able to craft and gather for fellow comrades and friends helping add to azure's prize pool maybe uh enjoying the hobby and efficiency of being a market mogul in 14. uh these are kind of just a list of you know, maybe untapped zones of entertainment and fun that some people, uh, you know, usefulness that many may Mm. not actually know they're missing out on. Uh, For present crafters and gatherers, having a more united industry presence within the community uh, can be an asset and an enjoyment as well. Um, But as we build our community's uh, crafting gathering, you know, skills and and we build that community up within Azure, we're also increasing the overall community wealth, sufficiency and capability in an unprecedented way. Um, So Mm -hmm. what we'd like to do is Mm -hmm. plan to kind of work with our community on this um, a lot, a a lot more as much as possible, you know, in the road ahead Uh, and hope that many of you, many of you listening uh, and many across the community will join us in progressing this ongoing goal. So some starting goals may be to maybe continue to recruit people to the link shell, uh, make, keep, keep people, you know, aware of the channel we have in discord. There's a role there as well. Um, I want to actually post more, uh, more guides and things like that to get, get people going, um, and create more resources and regular content across mm-hmm. our services. Uh, we're always open to new ideas as well. So definitely let us know. We got our suggestions so box as well. Yeah. Yeah. Like guys, if and you I haven't know... tried crafting, do it. <clears throat> and I definitely. know I always have trouble answering the question. Okay. Well, what, 
actually do I craft? I've finished my custom orders for the day. I, I don't, don't I don't know what else to craft, but I want to craft something. Well, I mean, actually pretty is. interesting in that so full disclosure, I have been trying Dragonflight on World of Warcraft recently, as some of you know. <laughs> they actually put in a system for like crafting orders within the yeah, game. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So like you could post, hey, if if we had a fourteen oh, version really of that, that, you could huh. post say, hey, you want a Renesita Boots of Aiming or whatever, mm. and some random oh, wow. crafter will see that and be like, okay, I'll I'll go ahead and make this, oh, gosh, and it's all handled awesome for had that in 14. <laughs> I would love for that to be in 14, be but until we do get something like that, mm -hmm. and I think having something within yeah. Azure that is able to teach people sort of, I guess, the old-fashioned way mm -hmm. how to mm -hmm. really get into crafting. And... Base crafting? Base crafting is stupid easy. You it's just, easy. You go out to the, the diadem as soon as you can. Oh, yeah. And then you level up your gatherers that way. Yep. And then but you level up your crafters with the diadem stuff, and then you're just done. And that's right, right. But once you're a max on the crafter, okay, what do you do then? Honestly, oh, then while you're leveling you low materials and like decent stuff, and when you're leveling a low crafter, uh, honestly, uh, I start with the beast tribes first and get them through because the beast tribes for crafting give decent exp. Uh, and so I'm far off topic. I love it. Yeah. I love Moogles, okay? <laughs> Sorry, Johnny. I love Moogles. They're cute. Oh, uh, uh, I love Moogles, but you gotta kill what you love. For, for those who do the uh, the firmament stuff, uh, that is something that is worth the time to learn how to craft and gather and do all yeah. this stuff, is uh, that you can... Uh, Get a pterodactyl mount. Yeah, which it takes reminds me, time. next time we have a blue moon glitchy, that I need to unlock the Moogle tribe, because <laughs> I feel like that's probably one of the conditions for unlocking that beast tribe, it doing is. it under the full moon. Yeah, the Moogles is fun. I actually uh, never did it back in the day, so I've been working on it recently. Okay, let's uh, let me let yeah, me finish are, off reading some of these uh, community updates, and then we'll go into the yeah. patch. And because <laughs> we are currently at uh, twenty nine minutes recording, and if we're going between forty five minutes to an hour, then we want to we want to move move along here. <laughs> um, so uh, let me uh, let me go through some of these community wide updates, and then we'll get into patch uh, six point three. <clears throat> So something uh, something coming up here with uh, 2023. This was actually planned for 2022, but 2022, like I said, was a bumpy year for a lot of people um, across the community, including for myself. Uh, so we went with the flow, and here we are in the new year. And now that we're in the new year, we are really focused on accomplishing uh, a whole list of stuff for Azure, starting with the first two quarters of the year and then moving forward. But one big thing that's coming up soon that's been planned for a long time is actually none other than the Azure Infinitum and Runaround Network merger. Now, when I say that some people actually have no idea what that means and others like have a little bit of an idea um, I've talked about this at a few assemblies of ours and I just wanted to you know uh, be clear as I've seen a little bit of confusion for those that don't know my personal website that I've produced content under for nearly two decades has been known as Runaround Network Azure Infinitum has grown to become a wonderful and major part of my life as it has many of yours and as Arian has been on a hiatus and inactive for some time uh, with my return to act act actively producing online content I've chosen to unite the two uh, so while uniting my content Azure as you know it uh, will gain benefits over time as our community continues to grow uh, and it uh, working under one name is actually going to help me continue to pr promote our community like way more um, so in a basic sense um, 
Azure, myself, those writing alongside us, uh, we'll be producing uh, uh, articles, things like this podcast, and you know, continuing to talk about gaming, anime, pop culture, uh, as well about our amazing community uh, as well, which is at, at, like right there at the core. Um, it's also completely fine if we have members or even leaders in the community that simply just want to stick to interacting with just the 14 free company, or uh, even just Discord, our Azure Wing, like our Destiny 2 group, uh, the Azure Wardens. Uh, but this plan has been an idea that's existed on the back burner for me and Azure since uh, just before the pandemic. Uh, so it's going to be manifesting uh, pretty soon, pretty soon. Um, there's a lot of people in game that are not going to really notice many changes. So don't don't freak out too much. <laughs> nothing's nothing's being changed drastically. We're just adding on uh, our, our our news blog type site that's going to be producing content. But it is my hopes that many from our community is actually going to enjoy and benefit from the content created to come, uh, and vice versa. Our visitors and growing readership will actually come to meld into it as future Azure Infinite members united, unite across the globe through live events, online, offline, across many games and frontiers for Azure to grow and thrive into the future, but one step at a time. Uh, to go with that, community-wide updates are coming. We've got information and content across the website, Discord, and social media accounts. They're going to be reviewed with updates made where needed. Uh, there are some pesky old links and some old information floating around that you know, could be overlooked here and there. So it's my goal to get everything updated and, and uniformed as soon as possible. Um, this includes references and links to RAN, which is going to be updated to just mention Azure from here forward. Um, the updated version of what's currently the RAN site is going to be renamed and host on a new domain uh, soon. Um, we are also going to be scaling back the current forums on the website. Discord has it beat. <laughs> so uh, yeah, several Discord channels. It's over. Yeah, no. it's a little There's hard no. to run a forum these days with Discord so popular and so handy. Um, so, you know, several channels are going to remain in the forum for various needs, such as the announcements channel, um, some other things, things like we use for the council, um, a few other channels. But uh, some of it's going to be scaled back. And uh, there, the, you know, in the future, we'll see how the activity is. If there's sections that, you know, maybe we can restore that people want to use, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's possible. So we'll see. Uh, there's definitely folks uh, using and visiting the site, though, so it's understandable that forums just aren't as active, you know, these, these days as opposed to earlier decades. Uh, but we want to further Sam develop and grow our Discord and social media circles as well. Uh, Sand Forum is the reason why we have my accidental naming of uh, two of our submarine things. Yes. Two of our what? The submarine and the Oh, airship. yeah, yeah, that's right. That's, that's, that's <laughs> Pegasus, the, uh, yeah, our, our submarine yeah, naming yeah. contest. <laughs> Pegasus yeah. Ucan is supreme and the Super Majestic Sea Flap Flap 2.0. <laughs> Well, amazing well, names, names amazing names but before this, we move on to patch 6.3 i just want to let those listening know that there is some uh discord updates that's going to be coming as well soon just various channels uh things we're going you know some channels we might merge some grossly inactive channels we might remove um you know there's that discord is always always developing so just keep an eye out for some of those announcements uh, we also plan on expanding our Infinitum Alliance. Um, this is a very little known thing for most people these days. It's a old link shell um, that we used as sort of a hub to ally with communities that are friendly to Azure. Um, it's been on the back burner for a long time, but we really would like to kind of, you know, work harder at increasing our presence uh, in not only in our server, but not just our presence, but our, our ability to, you know, do well with other communities, um, maybe launch larger scale events um, with multiple FCs that could be really beneficial to a lot of people. Um, Azure being a, a huge leader in activity in Midgard Stormer server, um, you know, usually at the top or close to it, um, you know, it's kind of a, um, maybe an untapped potential uh, that we may have to actually, you, you know, unite and bring more people together. Uh, so we're looking into Infinitum Alliance expansions, but not right away. <laughs> That's definitely going to be something that is uh, less of a priority until we get there. Um, but we will, we do plan on working on that. Um, and congratulations to the decor contest winners from 2022. Um, recently, our 2022 decor contest ended. We're going to be posting featurettes showing all the winners uh, and the gallery of the uh, entries that we had um, just across our. Uh, our network, you can, you're going to be able to find the main ones on the website, but if you follow us on uh, Facebook or uh, Twitter, you're going to see them there as well as Instagram. Um, and guess what guys, we've got a couple things we've never announced before. Oh. We have a couple oh. brand new 
Azure seasonal events coming 2023. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, so not is only, there going to be a second Santa sack? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> that's a good. That's a good question. But but uh, returning this year officially back on schedule, Azure Day weekend events will soon be scheduled, not only in just March, June, and November. November being the anniversary one. Uh, in addition, Azure seasonal events will be scheduled soon for the following months. February Azure Day uh, will include a Valentino's Azure Day. March will include a St. Patrick's Azure Day. And April will include a Easter Azure Day. August will have yeah. Summerfest. And October and December will have Azure Saints Wake and Azure Starlight Day once again. New to 2023, yeah, so the all new Azure Valentine's Day or Valentino's Day 14. Uh, St. Patrick's Day and Easter cool. theme events in 14, Azure Summer Festival, Saints Week, and Starlight Day is all scheduled for 2023. So there's no worry about uh, those going off the rails or not appearing this year. Um, we had to kind of um, <clears throat> jump in in, uh, I'd say, around August of 2022 um, and get get our special events back on schedule. Um, over yeah. the summer, of course, you know, that we, we had uh, for the first time in like eight, like what seven years i think we didn't have uh, an azure day on schedule um and like i said uh, earlier that, that was due to some of our uh the issues we encountered in 2022 um but like i said rest assured everything is back on track so let's uh let's delve into patch 6.3 <laughs> final fantasy 14 patch 6.3 launching so january 10th oh, i'm excited if you're listening to this before the patch launches, um, you can get a nice, good rundown of what we're going to talk about here and break down for you. Maybe you've watched the live letter, uh, maybe not, um, but we're going to uh, just kind of go, you know, just go over what to expect as well as 6.35, uh, which will be about a month, month, month to month and a half from now. Uh, I think the most important so thing is that people can now dive in Upper Lenosia. Yes. Yeah, you know what? That's the one thing I didn't really, uh, I didn't That's catch that. That's the only thing that matters. The What's, rest yes. of the patch is garbage. What's the point of diving in Lenosha? Is it, uh... I don't care about anything else. <laughs> well, Dude, apparently That's your, is that your favorite thing of the patch? Yeah. That's your favorite thing for this one? Are there going to be, like, <laughs> wild rave party underwater, I wonder? Yes. I don't know, but the if you look at the Lopperits, they look like they're getting down on a rave because I see yeah. a, like a, what looks like a Lopperit DJ. <laughs> some, I saw something, something so strange the other day when it came to like the beach, Lenosha, and raves. Uh huh. There was a rave party going on at one on o'clock in like out on the beach at two uh. o'clock in the morning. On <laughs> I ran across it on my own. And I'm like, what the? Co Coastal del Sol on? people turning up Coastal out in the middle of the morning. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, to so answer your question, Ash, I think I actually was reading on Reddit earlier <laughs> that it was literally just like one dev at Square Enix's pet project that it was just like, hey, I feel like adding diving to Upper Lenosha, and yeah, here we go. Right. Right. Yeah. Is is so, there is there spear fishing the involved or yeah. something that makes it yeah. worth it? No, it's yeah, terrible. there will be spear fishing. Okay, it's just spear fishing. So there is spear fishing. It's all going to be terrible. So there's like what, like level I'm... ninety fish in the middle of like a old level forty zone or something? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, but interesting. I'll be, I'll, be, I'll be that. Uh, I'm excited about Iron Sanctuary because not only are you getting new things, but you're also getting like uh, it looks like. From what it seems, mm -hmm. like new uh, like settings for crap, like d doing the little thing that the robot do. Oh yeah, uh, oh, and then there's yeah. the Griffin. And uh, Griffin I read that uh, people will be able to hear the orchestrian role that you're playing as well. Yes, oh, yeah. you just, you yeah. will be able to hear your orchestrian nice. roles, and they're adding a whole bunch of nice quality of life features to it. Okay, I'm That's actually really chilling cool. in game now, sitting on my island, just oh. Are you? relaxing. <laughs> yeah, get to uh, yeah. our Harath yeah. and Vier friends. They're getting new haircuts. Which, yep. since Misty is not here, I can't really rib him about this, but there is a bit of a running joke about giving him a haircut. <laughs> yeah. We we, go, we threatened go, to give him the yes haircut. Like <laughs> it looks like a Yu-Gi-Oh haircut, doesn't it? Right. On, on uh, like on Azure Day, I remember. Oh, was it the Christmas effect? I can't remember if it was Christmas or was it? No, it was Christmas. We turned uh, Miss Gar into a primal 
And we were like, we need to give him a BTS haircut. <laughs> He's like, no. Or and we were like trying uh, to find ways to drive him. I'm going to go down a list gentlemen. of uh, patch 6.3 features. So first, uh, patch 6.3 is going to continue the main scenario quest. Uh, super excited to see where that goes, because that's always my number one Yay. favorite thing about each patch Yay. is the story. Um, that's going to include, uh, eventually, the continuation of Tataru's Grand Endeavor. I think they said that was 6.35. Uh, Tales of Newfound Adventure, somehow further Hildebrand Adventures. Uh, and then yeah, the further so Hildebrand, uh, or the Mandeville Weapons, Mandeville Weapons 6.35. Uh, trial quests for the Lopperitz, uh, also 6.35, um, which will be a crafting-based uh, beast or tribe quest. I almost said beast tribe quest. <laughs> tribe quest. So excited oh, yeah. about this. Tribe quests, yeah. Yep, yep. Uh, the new dungeon is called Lapis Manalis, and it uh, looked like it takes place in the Garlemald region. Uh, and curious why we might be going there, but it'll be a story reason, I'm sure. <laughs> All I know is it has something to do with reapers. They've okay. talked about apparently it's important to the way the Garlings have uh, reapers, hmm. and that I don't want to call it magic, but it doesn't really seem like technology either. Really? Yeah. Okay. What if it's dynamos? Interesting. Oh, yeah. Interesting. Interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, um, who knows? I. So, so I think uh, any of our Reaper fans out there, you might be about to get the yeah. nice little world building dump. Yeah, I'm not versed in Reaper lore at all yet. So. Sure. <laughs> Whoa! I we found know. one part of FF lore, lore that Rake is not into. What? <laughs> Well, there's a there's a quite a bit of new stuff in dropped in Endwalker. Lore is back. Hi, Lore. <laughs> yeah, Lore. <laughs> oh, uh, let's continue. So, also new. Uh, so like, sorry, sorry. what's your glitch? What were you gonna uh, say? I was gonna say the preview of the boss looks awesome, and it also kind of reminds me of like the older Final Fantasy. It almost reminds me of Final Fantasy X because of all the belts. Oh, are I you see. talking about the? Um... Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh huh. <laughs> so belts. Interesting. So what do you yeah. think that boss stole all our belts? Oh yeah, the boss took all the oh belts God, that yeah. they dropped when uh, Endwalker came out. They removed the belts from the game to save uh, space for the game. So there's a new right. trial. Does anybody here have a guess on what that trial is? Because I do. Uh, I, I'm assuming that it's Final Fantasy IV base, and I never got. <laughs> yes. Fun, so yeah, it's gonna I be another know. one of the four fiends. So that's all I can. We've that's got the only bit of FF4 that little, I know. Little, little tiny bit of spoiler here for those listening, in case you want to just skip over the next like twenty seconds or whatever. Um, but we've got two fiends left that's not been fought because Scarmiglion and Barbaricia has already been fought. So the remaining two is Rubicante. And Cognazzo. So it's going to be one of the two. Maybe both. Who knows? I was kind of surprised that uh, Scarmiglione was, was a dungeon boss. So so uh, the other two are either hey. going to be for sure trials or maybe we'll fight Golbez himself. Uh, you know, at the, at the yeah, last one. Maybe right, Golbez, right before. For that. No way we're getting Golbez so this early. No, no, no we're not going to get Golbez this early. I think it's going to be like oh, right I... before uh, 7.0. Probably the 6.5 oh, or something. But they're going to be like basic baby fights yeah Ray, then, if found something new for your uh, i found something new for your fc room in the preview Ooh, what's that in, in the preview furnishings it was like a little like pudding cake oh. there's like a pudding cake thing oh and i'm like oh that, i'm totally oh, yeah. getting that yep <laughs> i'm like that is a break a thing yep. and i'm like ah you know if you guys <laughs> If you guys don't know, Rekha's room is, like, <laughs> the cutest the freaking most, room. Yeah, the most adorable <laughs> room ever. Go oh, visit it. Is. It's so cute. Yeah, I've been so adding cute. to it for a long time. It's The layout has never changed, uh, but I've added, like, more and more more stuff over time. So it started out as um, just sort of, um, you know, I th well, years ago, like, years ago <laughs> when rooms first came out basically um there's very very little to work with but when the shell when the wall shelves came out and those shelves that you can actually set plushies on 
I was like, oh, this yeah. is awesome. Like, I'm going to make, like, an like a in-game, like, like otaku-like room. But, you know, because, you know, there's no anime figures. So I was going to just have, like, I mean, there is those statues you can get, but they're huge. So they're humongous statues that are in the game. So I was like, I'm just going to collect plushies because they're adorable. And I was just, you know, putting them all on shelves and stuff. And, uh, and then more stuff came out and more and more and more. And then I was like, oh, let's, like, fill it with sweets and all these other, like, you know, lovely things. And so it just turned into what it is now. And now I have no more room to put any more plushies. And they keep coming out which is great i just don't have the room for them now so it's like whenever there's a new one that's like super adorable and i don't know what to do with it it's like such a hard oh my god it's so hard to choose what to remove from the room to put something else in sometimes what if you just put it in your house well the house the well the house that i own in the game is uh plot 24 and mist and the same war as the fc word uh word word seven uh you know here in midgard summer that plot of 24 that's dedicated to the council technically it's a council estate that i that that i own it but i dedicated to the council it's called the skies respite and it's where we do um you know uh, council meetings and live operations and meetings and ally meetings and stuff like that and it's all set up to be a you know the underground chamber with the council chamber um some other features and things a check-in area when you first get in it's pretty neat uh Check it out if you haven't. <laughs> if you're listening, uh, it's pretty neat. But, but I, I can't, uh, I can't uh, kawaiify the place because it's got to stay with the the inf the serious like infinitum theme, which is like a mix of like medieval and like regal type. Uh, you know, theme. But um, but but we're getting off track. <laughs> we're getting off track. <laughs> You've been off track for over like 20 minutes. <laughs> hey, we're on the patch have... though. We're on the patch. We got a new Unreal trial coming. Um, that is the yeah. Sophia Unreal. I'm wondering mm -hmm. if it's going to be um, as abrupt as the change was uh, from the last one to the current one. <laughs> or the, the what is I the hope... current one from the one before? Because Sephiroth was hard. Sophia because Sephiroth just shut people down. Yeah. Well, yeah. it is Sephiroth, but <laughs> it is Sephiroth. He's skipped like day. Now, uh, we're going to, we've, we've talked about you foreseen like a lot already. So let's just like skip that for now. Cause we've already talked about the new raid, uh, ultimate duty number five, Omega protocol ultimate. Uh, I know some yeah. people in the FC that's going to be happy about that. Mm. Uh, I have sort of a morbid curiosity for what they're doing with that. Like, that for those of you who've done a 12, oh, 12 S, uh, yeah. I wonder what they're going mm -hmm. to do with Goodbye World. <laughs> oh God, yeah, they're gonna have yeah, Goodbye World. That was the strategy. Be it's probably gonna be insane, and 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 oh. Omega deserves an ultimate, and we all knew it was coming. Uh, Omega being, you know, the the classic secret boss of Final Fantasy. Um, you know, seeing it in an ultimate form is just really cool. I'll probably never do it, but <laughs> just knowing it's there and looking at videos is really cool. A little bit of a spoiler, uh, if for those who have done uh, Omega, the, the final one, 12, uh, O12S, um, <clears throat> Omega, what, what, what really, what, it was kind of creepy and amazing at the same time to see Omega's story. And this is, Final Fantasy XIV is the first time that Omega's ever had like an origin story. We like we never knew what exactly Omega was in these other games, and yeah, uh, you know, and then there's going to be people out there that's like, eh, Final Fantasy's not connected, and be like, okay, just not get into that debate right now. But <laughs> but it, 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 yeah, hours. but but uh, yes, yes, it is. Those and Omega's origins in uh, in in Omega's origin story. I mean, to me, it was incredible to see Omega like you know fight fight mortals and then try to understand them by becoming them you know that was incredible the way that they did yeah. that at the end of that story and then if you do the savage version which i didn't even really look at or know about like for way oh, back when it first savages. came out oh uh, my god like i was in run. uh <laughs> i want to say transition yeah and yes represent. transition speed yeah. run strats yes <laughs> but but the most but but real quick before we move on like the one thing that's really amazing about about o12 s to me is that not only was O12 amazing, you know, with the with the male and female Omega and trying to understand, you know, humans and mortals and what made them, or just mortals in general, you know, and what made them so powerful and able to keep fighting all these, like, you know, beings that he kept throwing at us. Um, the amazing thing was what he turns into in the Savage version, at, you know, for the, for the rest of the fight. It's like yeah. this weird, twisted, like, biological, mechanical horror thing sort of, you know, Omega version of that, just trying to understand, like, 
life and like there's this dna floating in the background and stuff it's 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 like creepy and amazing at the same time and i didn't even know that that version you know existed and the song that plays mm -hmm. oh my god the song is like incredible it's amazing uh it's an amazing song that they did just for the savage one and you actually hear it in the 6.3 uh six, yeah the 6.3 trailer towards the end when you see omega uh omega male and female at the end so um just geeking out a little bit about Omega because Omega is like my all-time favorite secret boss <laughs> in the in the series. Omega weapon. I'm excited about uh, the new <clears throat> PvP that's coming up. What's that? I'm excited about the new PvP crystalline conflicts that's coming oh, up because yeah. there's a new. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah that map Josh. looks awesome. Yeah, yeah. I'm. I'm not convinced it'll be a good map for competitive matches. Like I think I think the tournaments will stay <laughs> with. Palestra, but it looks like a fun map. I, yeah. I, I am definitely it, interested in it trying really it. really cool looking. I mean, there's like those little zones where you're like kind of like, you know, disappearing and, uh, you know, it's just all those little walls and stuff. And it's it's Kugane themed, you know? It's it's just yeah. really neat. It's really neat. It's, we got a new deep dungeon like, too, guys. Um, I've heard Yojimbo's making an appearance in the new map. <laughs> oh, Yojimbo? Oh my gosh. It, it says Clockwork Yojimbo <laughs> right in the patch notes. Oh, jeez. Um, I got to look at that. Oh my god! Yeah, pre it's prelim like... patch patch notes are out. Uh, that's kind of yeah, early, so actually, isn't it? A few days early. Everywhere. Oh yeah. We got uh, see. So besides the PvP updates, we've also got uh, job adjustments, duty support for Heaven's Word, uh, dungeons, Rip the Halloween. new deep dungeon, nice. deep dungeon three finally coming out six point three five. So that's going to be a little bit uh, towards the end of next month. Uh, in February, Eureka Orthos, and surprise, surprise, announced for the first time here on the podcast, um, we want to bring back Azure Dungeon Delvers and do a Eureka Orthos event. So yes. look forward to that. Look forward to that. Please look forward Most to Most likely it. in early March, because Eureka Orthos is coming out at the end of Feb, and we want to, you know, feel it out first before we get an event going. It actually uh, makes me a little bit sad. Who is uh, the NPC Andon? Because he's a new custom delivery guy. Do you guys remember who that is? I don't, I don't remember. I don't is that remember. All I know is he looks Andin. like a bush. He looks like a. <laughs> is a bush. Oh my god! Are we delivering to a bush now? Oh no, not the bush thing. Yoshi P heard about uh, our escapades <laughs> the last Azure day. Oh, we have to talk about it. Oh. We have to talk about it. Just really, really quick. We have yeah. to talk about it. So, Please. okay, guys, you guys listening, you just strap yourselves in. This one's great. Uh, there's a, <laughs> there's a funny story that we got. There was an Azure day. Okay. as our, our celebratory weekend that we do uh, quarterly, uh, and then seasonally as well. And one of them, I, I can't remember which Azure day it was, but I do know it was in 2021. Um, probably the anniversary towards the end of the year. I want to just, I'm just guessing unless it was summer. I think it was the November one. You think it was? Okay. I think it was the anniversary at the end of 2021, just before Endwalker came out. Um, yeah. we're doing a hide and seek game in Thanaland and we're yeah. in central Thanaland and we're, you know, not too far from, from Blackbush, or at least I was when I was running around. And the first thing that happened was I saw a, uh, there's a char character, one of our members was a Lalafell hiding in a bush and they were like looking up because of the way they were sitting. You know, it's like when a Lalafell like, you know, sits and kind of looks up a bit. And all I saw from the angle with the top down angle, cause I was checking like every single bush cause people love to hide in the bushes during our hide and seek oh, yeah. game. The rule is you got to have 30% of your character at least exposed. That way it's a kind of, you know, it's, it's more fair. You can't fully clip into something and be eclipsed. But I saw just the little Lalafo face, like, poking out of the bush. And I took a little screen cap of it and posted it in Discord. And it was, everybody he had a good laugh at that. But right after that, I go to the next bush. <laughs> it's like when you're walking down to the clutch area in central Thailand. And, yeah. uh, you know, it's that, it's, that, it's that right side area of the map. And uh, there was just one bush. And I'm like... I'm like, okay, just, you know, eh, just routinely checking the bushes. And in Say Chat, there were people in it that weren't Azure. And they say, in Say, welcome to the bush. Just, mm -hmm. just welcome to the bush. And welcome to the bush. I've never had a bush welcome me while in hide and seek. <laughs> it's never happened never before. Did. I was pleasantly surprised. And that was the best bush I've ever checked. And there was people in there and they were like welcome to the bush and then of course you know me i tried to recruit them they were fc list yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> well, they, 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 did, they didn't the join bush. they didn't join they were they were they were enjoying their bush and um 
you know, I think when I left, like I was walking away and they were literally like saying, thank you for visiting the bush. And I have no idea what was going on there, but it was hilarious. We were all dying. Were they all Discord. Olafel? They weren't all Olafels. No, I think, uh, I think there was an Elizin in the bush and probably a Lollafell. So there was at least one Lollafell though. I'll tell you that, but I'd already found one of our Lollafells in a bush. I go to another bush and I get, I was welcome to the bush and I was like, I was like, I don't know what's going on here, but we got people like hiding in the bush. That's not even our hide and seek people. <laughs> oh boy. So that's just a funny story. Oh my God. Um, uh, what have we not covered back. yet for the patch here? Um, Let's see. Going down. We talked about well, most of we're it. getting Valentine outfits, uh, no longer gender lock. Mm -hmm. Yes. So for those who like a chainsaw mm -hmm. man, you can wear that jacket that uh vest and uh come yeah. look like it that would imply i have money to buy okay. that thing to oh, i have also, been looking uh... forward to wearing that vest i think it's still yeah. in my armoire from one that actually got introduced you know what don't forget the new uh nice. the new maps coming out the uh shifting gymnasium agonon agonon uh, available yeah. through treasure map obtainable usable in elpis a new course will be added to the gold saucers leap of faith minigame silf mm. step and we've got additional housing wards uh area or yeah additional housing wards for residential areas are going to be added that's six regular wards and six subdivisions that's 1800 new plots mm -hmm. per world available to purchase via lottery uh, due to the housing availability in existing worlds, plots in newly added wards are unavailable for purchase. So wards available to free companies versus private buyers. That's going to be detailed all on Lodestone. So you know, wants to just want to go there and check luck. that out. Uh, yeah, I good think, luck. <laughs> I think it's talked about it in one of the live letters, actually. I think uh -huh. I think maybe the FC ward is about to be opened up again. So okay, if, interesting. If y'all are lucky with automatic demo, you might get you might. one of you the might. best plots in the game. You might. Yep. I'm still saving up my go, big sad. Oh, you know what? There's a small thing I'm excited about, but it's the alternate UI theme three, the clear blue theme that's coming out. One, it's blue. Two, that it's really nice. Seven R one. Oh, and uh, the yeah, it is based. It is actually inspired by Seven Remake. Um, the the current blue one that's like a like a real classic old school blue Final Fantasy one. I tried it, but my eyes were screaming. Like after like a while, <laughs> I like look around after staring at all those blue menus and like things are like turning green in my eyes when I look around. So I was like, I can't do that. But maybe this one. This one's kind of nice looking. Um, the previews they showed already looked really cool. So and it's kind of yeah. a slightly opaque. Uh, so it kind of looks good. Um, but yeah, job adjustments coming to Paladin. Um, the, I'm going to read a little description here um, because I'm still scared job Paladin. adjustments could mean a lot of things. But the main adjustments coming, the objective of these adjust, adjustments is to improve the ability to deal burst damage by adjusting action efficiency and rotations and then improve versatility by decreasing reliance on damage over time. I like my dots, so I don't know what they're going to do there. Oh, but improving the usability of certain offensive for actions the two burst. also a goal. That that's yeah, Paladin, what I've heard. Paladin's fallen in line. That's what's happening. Uh, rotations oh, are being shortened, though, to accommodate high-powered actions. Damage over time effect going for Goring Blade. Uh, and uh, Blade of Valor is actually was being removed and their potency adjusted. Divine Might is now applied after weapon skill combos, allowing Enhanced uh, Holy Spirit to be executed without cast. And Holy Sheltron's effect... That's being changed to reduce damage taken, uh, which thereby enhance, enhancing the defensive capability against the DOT. Um, so the previously removed Bulwark ability uh, is getting revamped and reintroduced, offering increased defensive capability. Uh, utility of other actions and combos are also going to be adjusted. So a little worried, but uh, I, I trust the devs. <laughs> yeah. So we'll see. Uh, we'll see. Is it true that your current that rotation is basically a spreadsheet? Like, I hear some of our paladins talk about that, but... I, I got uh, it memorized, like, so, I mean... It's not it's not so much a spreadsheet <clears throat> as it is... No, it's a spreadsheet. I'm going to quote uh, Axel from Kingdom Hearts. You read the spreadsheet, got it memorized. <laughs> all, all I have to say is, uh, Nora, we have to send Missy through P5S just to have him test mm -hmm. it, because we'd like to cause him pain. Are we really going to drag Misty through uh, P5S Devour Prog just to Yay. test the new Oh, but hey, uh, uh, I just noticed something. Uh, speaking of Eureka Orthos, that's the Deep Dungeon uh, under the Crystal yeah. Tower that uh, oh, we yeah. were planning also, on an event for. Oh, guys. For, uh, oh, yeah. But, but, uh, well, I, I brought it up for a second earlier, uh, talking about Azure Dungeon Delver's oh, returning. I 
But I just wanted our listeners uh, and everybody to know that you will need to clear f- floor 50 of Palace of the Dead to be able to access this. So uh, make sure you do that before the end of February and early March if you want to get into the event. If you need or help try out and Orthos. I'm online, hit me yeah. up. Gosh, gosh, yeah. gosh. We've yeah. got a couple of necromancers and lone heroes I'm sure would be able There are to help so <laughs> many people that would love you know, to just pull people through POTD. So, you know, definitely be vocal care. about what you need. I, yeah. I, speaking of lone hero, Osh. Mm-hmm. Uh, we had we we had this thing where we were helping you work. Well, so we had this, was that glitchy? We got, got, got to immortalize the story. We got to immortalize the story. Tales this week. You I'm not going to mention the story. like names. Oh, do we have a story? Have, What's the story? Yeah, we got a story. Okay, so we have okay. You know how we have Ultimate Legends and Lone Hero in our RFC. Mm-hmm. Okay, so we're going. We all go. We have four Ultimate Legends in the party and the Lone Hero in our in this party to help a friend, uh, friendo get uh, their Shinryu mount. Okay, so mm-hmm. I was like, okay, this is gonna be easy peasy. And then we we skip mechanics, um, and then like the part where you do the tappy tap tappy, and then like after that you have to like run. To go to the other, eat yourself to that other platform. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. They yeah, all of the all, all, all of the the night. off the edge. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the lone hero. <laughs> I, oh I my god! Yell, but laughing on Shinryu I, EX. <laughs> <laughs> it was so fuck. It was so funny. It was. I. I was like, oh my god, you guys are ultimate legends, but you've died at <laughs> two. And this was and during Wondrous it, Wednesdays. It, it, it was, it was after Wondrous yeah. Wednesdays. It was after Wondrous Wednesdays. Oh, just after Wondrous Wednesdays. Was, okay. Was okay. After, <laughs> it was after because uh, because Lore just rejoined us. Mm-hmm. Again, shout out Lore. What up, bro? Shout out Lore. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Lore is back, and we got Lore all all Lore's doggos. Nice, <laughs> nice. But yeah. I gotta get those sometime. Fun. But yeah, I heard when Glitchy was telling me about this Thursday morning, I was like. Okay. Okay. Was it the tail? Because that because that phase one mechanic is a pretty. We didn't even see that the still tail, trips people which is up. Crazy. The tail or the first knockback that trips people up. When she told me what it was that caused the life, I was like, <laughs> really? Yeah. Yeah. And it will now live uh, eternally in my head. It's too funny. Uh, also, speaking of Wondrous Tales, nothing, though, nothing, we have, nothing. speaking of Wondrous Tales, in 6.3, we're getting updates to the prizes that are available. Yeah. And really looking, at, oh, yeah, for sure. looking at the patch notes, Glitchy's going to love this one. There is a Corgi earring and a Corgi neck kerchief. Oh, yeah, the necktie. There's a necktie yeah. with a corgi on it, as well as right. an earring in the shape of a corgi. I, I love corgis. And also... Hello. Come get, come to Wondrous Wednesdays. We ha- we will help you get your corgi. Well, hopefully. It, it, also, so, Zarn, you can, we can't, also, we can't also, get your lines for you, but we can help you get there. Also, everybody, <laughs> come out to Wondrous Wednesdays. Yeah. Yep. So just real quick here, I'm going to go over uh, f- a few final things uh, regarding uh, uh, the road ahead in 6.3. Um, 2023 is also the 10th anniversary of Aroma Born. So uh, Yoshi P has said that there is a lot of things planned. Um, I believe that this is my personal idea, but when by the time we reached you know the rising, the yearly uh, 14 anniversary event in game, that there's probably going to be some big things going down for the rising. Um, and then probably around that yeah. time, other things as well, maybe special concerts and merch and just whatever. They're probably going to go all out. Um, Please bring yeah. yours in <laughs> symphony and distant worlds to the U S that's right. all. Well, I'm I was going to say, uh, they, 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 let, they are, let, they let, are let, actually, I know you <laughs> um, they said, let, uh, they said, well, actually, or is it the album? Oh, that's the album. Uh, Yours in Sydney, Final Fantasy XIV Orchestral Album Volume 3, uh, coming out in Japan April 26, 2023, and May 2023 for uh, North American Europe. So, yeah, it's it's the album. Um, but I it'll have the To the Edge Orchestrian they... and the Flow Orchestral uh, oh. Orchestrian roles. 
Yeah, I think they confirmed that they're going to do Eorzean Symphony uh, in conjunction with NA FanFest. Uh -huh. Oh, okay. But okay. Oh, FanFest is probably going to be I pretty, wanted to get the uh, Distant Worlds treat. Anniversary. I, I actually saw Distant Worlds when they came to my hometown of Houston. Mm-hmm. Ages ago, ages ago, like yeah, Did you... like before I was even really an FF fan, I was I was like, oh wow, hey, okay. this, hey, video game symphony, yeah, they've been let, doing let's it for go. a long I, time, cool, oh, yeah, and yeah. they they did Genova, they did all of the classics at that time. I think they're even, pl I think they even get to play Answers in Dragon Song now. Oh, awesome! Yeah, uh, there I was one. I unfortunately missed them the last time they were ago. in the U.S. doing it, so I yeah. I hope they bring it back. I was gonna say there was one a few years back um, that I think did Dragon Song, so it was pretty cool. Um, it's oh, so cool. speaking of PvP, that we were talking about earlier, the Crystalline Conflict mm -hmm. Community Cup in Japan is going on. We actually have a member who's who was participating in that. Uh, shout out to Ave really in our FC. Yeah. <laughs> Ave or it Ive? Wanna? It's Ave or Ive. I can't. I don't know how Ave, they pronounce yeah. it. Ave, yeah. And uh, then um, also, don't forget, housing demolition is going to recommence uh, very soon. Houses. So keep uh, mm -hmm. keep keep checking in your house at least every so you know a couple couple weeks. Don't push it too much further; it'll, it'll explode. I, uh, I make a habit <laughs> of just every time I log in, I rotate over to my house and. Yeah. Just go inside. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Chill yeah. out. Listen to my orchestra and roll for every a so bit. many like retainer checks. I use my house because I have retainers inside. Um, also, for our fourteen players, don't forget that Heaven's Turn is uh, Heaven's Turn, or if uh, you're playing in Japanese, Falling Gods Festival is going to uh, end pretty soon. So if you haven't done those uh, those event quests, you might want to get on that. Um, it's pretty pretty fun oh. this year. It's you know <clears throat> short but sweet. It is. Oh, and uh, this doesn't have like, anything to like do with 14, but it, basically. there are pre-orders oh. announced for FF16, and that's June 22nd, yes. 2023, so uh, just I for those who are interested. I cannot wait for 16. <laughs> like, you know that, what? That's I, pretty much the that, reason I That's going to be a whole nother podcast, so, <laughs> oh, yeah. oh my God. Let's, uh, yeah. so let's talk a little bit about Destiny 2 here real quick. Um, what, what did you yeah, have, sure. Glitch? What were you going to say? So there's something that makes me sad about uh, that the a quest that they're removing uh, soon, mm -hmm. and it's like it has this like it's just like it's not even a quest it's just like a full like cutscene of like uh, Noah the person that the Saint Coinock people are like named uh -huh. after in Mordona yeah but the but I hardly Noah quest uh -huh. I was like oh that's kind of neat I like that lore oh that one yeah. Yeah, and I'm like, they're taking that away, and I'm like, I'm sad. Oh, I see it right here. It says, uh, yeah. oh, oh, they're, are they removing Gift of the Archmagus as well? Yeah. Yeah. Right uh, so to get to Eureka Orthos, that's the deep dungeon we were talking about a moment ago, you got to be level 81 or higher, uh, as well as, like I said, clear the uh, 50th floor of Pass of the Dead. Um, Eureka Orthos entry is available for groups 1 to 4, uh, no rule restrictions, difficulty unaffected by party size. Uh, the NPC Co. Rob, Rob, Robinta... Uh, in Mordona uh, is going to be the one to unlock the quest with the addition of Orthos previous quests with Ko Robinta, but I hardly know it. And the gift of the Archmagus is going to be removed. Uh, funny thing about the gift of the Archmagus, it was kind of funny, like like getting to know there was like this like ancient Elgin like soul, yeah. like helping you cool. like upgrade your gear back in like two point one or something or two point three or something. <laughs> they say there is it no was... need for Crystal Tower weeklies anymore, so the NPC has been given a new duty. Uh and then there's a new hairstyle coming with Orthos as well, which is like a very short kind of um, spiky hairstyle that, that uh Yoshi's know, holding so up excited. a picture looking at a, a hume with it. Um <laughs> so uh that that kind of covers it. Um you know, we uh, we could go into predictions and and things like that, but we kind of just wanted to give a kind of short, sweet uh, rundown of yeah. uh, six point three. Um, before we end here, though, uh, we have one more thing mm -hmm. we want to talk about. Uh, uh, yeah. We are uh, always working on uh, recruitment and spreading awareness for our Destiny Two clan. Um, recently, we started a brand new Facebook page uh, to support the clan and getting the word out there, as well as uh, starting to get a little bit more deeper into recruitment to get some more active players uh, in, in the wing. Um, we invite everybody who plays Destiny. Destiny is a really fun game. Um, mm -hmm. I am not 
nowhere near far <laughs> at all but what i have played i've really enjoyed i've been just been kind of yeah. casually working on it um and honestly yeah like if you already have an in-game clan that you run with come hang out with us anyway yeah like, you literally like can the clan, the clan <laughs> activities are open to anyone that joins the azure discord and hangs out with of us of course of course yeah, yeah. Being, in our, being in our discord Nightfalls. is still being a go, go, you know being an azure member fucking, you're, you, uh, you can still get into events when we group because we use grouping uh in disc we use discord for grouping so you know yeah. if you if you are a part of a clan that you really really love we don't want to force anybody to to leave that but you know we would love to have you uh if you'd like to join the azure clan for destiny so um we've got the new expansion coming out february 28th lightfall uh, yeah. Looking really nice. <laughs> I'm not even like in the end game, but I'm like looking at all the stuff, and I'm just like, it's it's really neat. It's got that whole cyberpunk vibe. Yes, I am always down for more cyberpunk. Oh my aesthetic. god, yeah, it's really cool. And Destiny cyberpunk, like very interesting. Be... It looks and good. Apparently, looks really the, good. the new subclass we're getting, you can basically be Spider Man. <laughs> yeah, oh, I like, saw that. Yeah, literally, it's like web slinging. Uh huh. It, being like you're going through New York and just yeah, swinging from so building awesome. to building. It looks really, really cool. Uh, Bungie is just like so good at this stuff. <laughs> They're really, really good at making it feel. It feels really good to play. Like that's something. Wait, been, wait, uh, Nora. I've been the game has always been good. It. I just hate when they take stuff away from it. Yeah. Oh, give give me a minute. My headset's dying. <laughs> okay. Are you trying me? Does that? They're telling me that I can become Spider Glitch. Spider glitch, spider glitch, eats all of the chicken nuggets. Is that of course? Uh, are you? We'll also we'll also get to go surfing on the <laughs> actual shockwave that is created by a Titan's thunder crash. So that is going to be fun too. And also, maybe an idea is your, for uh, next is your headset clan right now? photo, uh, Nora, or are you talking yeah. through glitches, Mike? Yeah, my headset. Oh, okay. I couldn't tell for a second. Okay, cool. Awesome. Sometimes she does that go through me, unfortunately. Yeah, it's hard with how we're set up physically, but I ha I have one of those headsets. I can just swap the battery. Okay. Let, okay. Let focus. So, uh, was there was there anything specific that you wanted to bring up here about Disney Two uh, or our wing, uh, Nora? Uh, not r not really. Um. I think Mystigar wanted me to talk about uh, Iron Bana Iron Banner, or as oh, yeah. we like to call it, yes. Iron Banana. <laughs> What's going on with that? Is a fun-ish crucible uh, uh, mode that they add for two weeks out of the season, and has a whole separate track of rewards and okay. the nice title you can get from it. Nice. It used to be just a souped-up version of Control that everyone knows and loves in normal Crucible. But lately, the last few Iron Banner weeks, Bungie has been trying different things with it. So gotcha. this, this time around, it's like a King of the Hill sort of thing. Okay. Where, oh, fuck okay, you. we're fitting over our control <laughs> points as usual, but then suddenly the cabal will drop a drop pod literally on our heads. And oh, okay. There will be no. a, a high value uh, control point that we have to fight over. That includes killing yeah. turrets and everything. <laughs> that's way far away from where you were when you got crushed by the first one. Yeah, that's... Of course. Of course. You yeah. know how drop pods work. <laughs> <laughs> I have experience with drop pods because it dropped on my head. I used to play... I used to play uh, Destiny. Not mm. so much no more. But yeah, we've got a couple of us that are trying for getting that, finally getting that Iron Lord title. Maybe, that, maybe even as early as this season. So, we'll stay tuned, and or better yet, come and join us. <laughs> oh yeah, join them. definitely. Um, if you're listening, you know, and maybe maybe you're a listener who you know who hasn't joined us outside of 14, or maybe uh, maybe you found us uh, via YouTube or Facebook or Twitter. Um, you know, uh, we, we're, we're a community that's always welcoming, um, you know, we're happy for members to join the discord and chat with us to actually come into one of our clans or, or guilds, like 
Final Fantasy XIV's FC that we have for Azure, or the uh, Azure Warden's Destiny 2 clan. And, uh, you know, um, always looking to build activity, uh, meet new friends. Our, our Destiny 2 clan, we have, you know, I think uh, Nora said recently that uh, about at least half of uh, the members in the Destiny 2 clan, you know, log in, uh, you know, um, at least within a day, right? About a day or, uh, day within, or two. Uh, I'd have to go back and look. Obviously, since we're in a new seasonal cycle, it, it'll sort of ebb and flow a bit. Okay, yeah. But well, that's understandable. I think at, at least there's a nice core of us that are around every week. Just pop into the Discord, ask if you want to run something. I'm sure it may not be as fast as LFG, because I know, I know Destin... There are dedicated LFG infrastructure, but I'm sure if you ask, someone would be willing to set something up. We've gotten together for ad hoc Spire of the Watcher dungeon runs or, or uh, the raid or even just, I'm sure I'm going to be just chilling in our Destiny 2 voice running Iron Banner this week. Because well, you know the... I need to get some of that Iron Lord progress. But... Yeah. <laughs> well, Nora here is uh, one of our two uh, wing commanders that's in charge of the Azure wing. Um, we can we consider um, any of the clans that we have outside of our FF14 core uh, to be wings. And so Destiny 2's uh, Azure Wardens represents a wing of Azure Infinitum. Um, our, our, all of our rules and ranks in Azure Infinitum are universal across games. Uh, Nora here being a, a lieutenant of our Azure Council also oversees uh, the Destiny 2 Azure Wardens clan along with uh, our other lieutenant, Mystigar, who's normally with us on the podcast. Uh, mm, Mist, yeah. we hope you feel better. <laughs> we hope you feel better, yep. Mist. And yep. uh, also, uh, Baby Shoes is normally with us here on our podcast, and uh, he is oh, out he on a married. honeymoon. Yep, <laughs> he's out in Vegas. We say this, but he actually DM'd, he yeah, actually yeah. whispered me in 14 before Wondrous Tales oh, the other he? night. <laughs> I don't, no, no, it was before yeah. Maps yesterday. He oh, was before like, Maps yesterday. Hey, I'm on my honeymoon testing this on the Steam Deck. That's great. Oh my yeah. gosh. And I'm like, dude, <laughs> you're on your honeymoon. Bro. Get off got, of 14. <laughs> he got married and went to the AVNs. Like, yeah. <laughs> We'll Funny to, thing uh, is, hear about his he's not the first time. Azure member I know of that has actually logged into 14 and tried to do events on their honeymoon. Like, guys, oh my goodness. Oh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you know what? We're That's really funny. Yeah. You're always here. You have your honeymoon ideally It's only really once. funny that you said <laughs> that because I, 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 over the years, I have seen some people go way out of their way to like try to attend certain events, like be in the middle of like oh. crazy things that you wouldn't expect people would log in for, you know, or during, you know, but uh, that's funny. Guys, you can always come back and run maps with us when you're done and with your yeah. honeymoon. Enjoy this. Enjoy She's your trip. Friends, his wife <laughs> would, <laughs> is a man. But I wanted to say uh, Claudia, regarding the Destiny Claudia 2 clan, though. It and, and they was only mad because she couldn't be playing. Oh. <laughs> but, like, uh... They were all... <laughs> That concerning was our Wednesdays back in the day. Oh yeah, <laughs> but uh, concerning our Destiny Two clan, you know, I just want to say to those listening, uh, you know, the the other the other nice thing is, um, you know, may, maybe uh, like Nora said, uh, may not always be as fast as LFG, uh, but you know, when you when you have a a, a community that you can really chill with, uh, play with, you know, play with some of the same people, get to know each other, make some friends. Uh, you know, it, it can be really nice. So we kind of have a you know light version of our of our larger community, uh, you know, going on over in the Azure Wardens. It's just kind of a relaxing place to play Destiny Two together. Um, if you want to get a feel for how the clan is, uh, you can always pop in. You don't have to be in the clan to come along. Uh, yeah. Just be a member of the Discord. Uh, and if you do join the clan, that'd be awesome because we are recruiting. We are actively recruiting, even though we're always open. Um, we are actively recruiting a little bit more. So. Um, Definitely, definitely uh, check us out and uh, come along and uh, play some Destiny 2 with us. Um, and that would be it for this Azure Infinitum podcast episode. That's 
all the time we have today. Um, I, we could definitely go on and, and talk more. Like I said earlier, we could definitely talk more about our like predictions for the patch story or, um, you know, other things that we want to see coming, you know, coming soon and the excitement for 6.35, which we'll definitely, uh, we'll definitely get there when we get closer to 6.35. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> But uh, I do want to thank all of you guys uh, for listening, all of our listeners thank here, you. those uh, finding us by well, whether it is uh, through YouTube or Facebook or uh, Twitter or any other source, or maybe listening to us straight out of the Azure uh, Discord. And definitely thank you to everybody here with me tonight. Um, Oshkosh Bagash, Nora Swift, Glitch Symphony uh, here with us tonight. And... Uh, Thank you for listening, guys. As free as you as your sky. Thank you for having me. Here. <laughs> yeah.